there's a great, and I think it's Nathaniel West, but I think he said, um, Hollywood's the only place where you can die of enthusiasm. <laughs> and I just loved it because it's, it's nothing but, you know, they love it. Yeah. It's fantastic. Oh my God. I mean, everyone's talking about it. Yeah. Um, oh, you should have heard it. And when I told people in the room, the room went, you know, and you hear all those things and then um, people can hear that for 15 years and nothing happens. Yeah. And Imagine. So, it frightened the life out of me. It really did frighten me. Like I was going to meet these, you know, really great writers just to sort of, you know, just to pick their brains or, or get tips on how it's done and, and, and sort of realize they hadn't had anything produced for like, you know, X amount of years. And um, I just, I find it really scary because I just love making stuff. Of course, yeah, that sounds yeah. like a really obvious thing to say, but. Um, no, but it is, the, it's funny. It's not, uh, you say it's an obvious thing to say, but I meet so many people, young people that talk to me and they say, you know, they're interested in, they want to talk to me and how do I do it? And I'll say, what is it you want to do? And they, they, it's clear very quickly they want to be famous. Yeah. And what I try to point out to them is you really have to love making stuff. Yeah. Because there's no guarantee. First of all, the, the fame thing, um, I always try and tell them is it's a, it's, it feels almost like a dental x-ray. You almost don't even feel it. It's nothing. <laughs> you get your table a little faster at a restaurant and- you take a lot of selfies, but other than that, <laughs> there's not, it's a very thin broth. There's not a lot there to yeah. sustain you. So you really have to like what you're doing. You, yeah. like, you have to love the process. Some of them get it and some of them look at me like I'm um, a very strange old man. Yeah. Why is he babbling about this stuff? I think that's that's it entirely. I think with um, with pulling, I just loved it so much. Yeah. You know, I loved the characters and I loved what Dennis and I were saying. And um, it was kind of, I, I could have I could have gone on doing that for years. And then I found myself in a situation where, y you know, I was like, I was writing shows. I had no idea how I'd sort of gotten myself into that situation. And, and just the very thought of doing something for for years. And because writing is so hard anyway. Yeah. I mean, you really, really do have to love it. Oh, when people tell me they love writing, I'm very suspicious. I think you, the first thing you have to admit is that it's hard. Yeah. And it can be miserable. And sitting down and facing a blank page. Yeah. I can think of few things. I was more miserable. I think I did good work for Saturday Night Live uh, when I was young, but being up at night trying to think of a sketch on that deadline was more terrifying oh, to me than anything man. I've ever done as a performer. Yeah. And you I, get you get that that it's a mad anxiety, isn't it? Yeah, and I know you've had that too. You've struggled or you've had and unfortunately. I've had um, people say to me, well, when does the anxiety go away? And I've had to break it to them that if you're, it's part of the process. Yeah. It's, the, it's the rocket fuel. Yeah. You need it. Um, you need to feel bad sometimes in order to feel good. And I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of people tell me, you shouldn't say that. That's not true. I don't see another way around it. I think, <laughs> I mean, I think your anxiety and some level of self, I don't want to call it self-loathing, but just, there's part of you that's saying, come on, come on, yeah. you could do better. You need that. And yeah. when people uh, are too content with the writing process, I'm really suspicious. Oh God, yeah. Like Very. You, then you're not, but, I don't want to read it if you had too much fun writing it. <laughs> some, sometimes um, sometimes it, 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 it doesn't feel like you're being um, truthful or, or earnest with that, you know, like you're just being um, a difficult um, writer person. Mm -hmm. But um yeah, I mean, I'm never, I'm never happy I, un, until I get to the point where it's kind of, it's all done and I've like chiseled it into something that really, yeah. I genuinely do feel like I put my all and everything into that and all the best bits out of everyone on the team has gone into it, you know, all the way across the line. And finally, you know, we've done all that work and it's it's ready to go. And at that point, I would be happy. Here's what I'm happy. I'm happy when I know I've got it it's all on, there's a lot of good stuff on the page and now I get to edit. That makes me happy. Yeah. Because it's going through, 
let's tighten it up a little more. Yeah. Let's tweak this. Maybe this doesn't follow that. So let's move it over here because then I know I've got it. Yeah. And now I'm just Ooh, polishing yeah. it. I'm polishing it, but it's not done yet because once it's done, I start to get a little depressed <laughs> about <laughs> yeah. what's the next thing. So I like that little period. It's, I don't know if you've had this, but one of my favorite times is when I'm done with the performance and I'm meeting with everybody in the, you know, in the dressing room afterwards and we're going through the the show and talking about everything. And then I know we're going out to dinner and I get to have some wine. That moment when I'm wiping the makeup off, but I know I'm going off to dinner and we're all going to be wise asses, right. but the show was a success. Yeah, That's a moment that I absolutely adore. Yeah. And I know it's never going to be quite that good again, you know, until, <laughs> the, until I get to the next one. Yeah. Because it can change on a dime, can't it? You yeah. know, like I've had, um, you know, I've, I've, I've been pretty happy with something and someone's gone in and and sort of fiddled with it and and I've watched it and gone, oh, well, it's a load of old shit. I mean, this is right. clearly a, a, a terrible piece of work. And so it doesn't take much for me to sort of lose my confidence. And um, because I, I, I do think there is not a, a huge amount of difference in, in, you know, when something's good and great, right? It's just like detail and, you yeah. know, trusting yourself and your taste and all that. But I remember back in the day, I, I found writing... I, I, it was, it was a bit of a torture because I hadn't figured out that thing that you just described there that you can get it all down, yeah, and then you start, you know, the the work of making it good. Whereas I would like sit there and just like try and wait. Each word could, has to be yeah, perfect before yeah. you write the next word, which doesn't work. Yeah, which really doesn't work. And um, yeah, it was actually De Dennis um, Kelly who I, I learned that off. You know, um, I don't know who he learned it off, <laughs> but but yeah, just get it all down there. And when you feel like there's some really good s stuff in the mix of yeah. all the terrible stuff, then you're not in a bad place. You've done a great job of finding these other people because I know you met Rob Delaney through Twitter and you guys, of course, worked together on Catastrophe and that's how I met you. You came on yeah. promoting that and remember that grabbing my attention and thinking, okay, this person's really special, but you, you know, finding voices that you know, I can work with this person. Yeah. This person, I mean, it is, finding a good creative partner is not unlike going on a good date. It's just finding that we've got that freeze on, we've got something that yeah. connects. I've been really lucky. I don't know how it's worked out for me, really. I, I mean, because I, I make a show in, in the UK called Motherland and that mm -hmm. is with, um you know, co-writers as well. And um I don't know. I've just gotten really lucky, I think, because I do. It's a scary thing, isn't yeah. it? It's a really scary thing. And, you know, um, any of my writing partners I've gone through, um, like, you know, I've lost confidence with in myself, yeah. you know, yeah. um, where I've found it too hard to sort of say something that I think is funny just because of, you know, just losing my um, confidence. But um but it's getting to that place where you feel like an old married couple where you really don't give a shit, you know, where you will fart in front of them and and not and not be worried, you know. Right. If it smells. I I mean that's a metaphor. I'm not I don't fart in front of Rob Delaney or Dennis Kelly or Well, I think you just said you did. <laughs> and we've got that now. We've I'd like to say we've got it on tape, but I know it's all digital. <laughs> Where do I come from a different but time? But you know, you know that yeah. thing of like not being scared. If of you course. say something stupid, you say something not well, funny. I, you know, all the people that I love working with, uh, I love my exercise is what's the worst thing I could do in this situation? <laughs> what's the, what's the, and I, I spin out these wild scenarios of we're here in a restaurant. What's the worst thing I could do <laughs> that would end my and me and it's just something where I make a complete total ass of myself and I spin it out in great detail and I can always see it perfectly clearly and people will be laughing at that and I don't know what it is but it's it's this comfort that I can say these horrible things <laughs> to my friends about what I'm going to do uh -huh. in this restaurant that will finish me forever <laughs> um and uh we talk about it and it's just a joy it's a joy to have people like that in your life